when we talk about this matchup, one of the first things that comes to my mind is the playoff implications really for both teams when it comes to to this matchup because the Chiefs pretty much have to win this game if they want to be in the hunt for the AFC number one seed with the Steelers losing to the Washington football team, but that was an NFC team, so it didn't really do anything for the Chiefs to stay in pursuit with uh, the Steelers. They have to win this game, and the Dolphins are fighting for wild card spots too. So what do you think about the playoff implications uh, for the Dolphins in this? Oh, no, they're huge. And the thing with the Dolphins is they're eight and four, except they're then the seven teams will make the playoffs that currently hold the sixth spot in the AFC, except there are nine teams that are seven and five or better. So it's obviously quite the battle, as you know. I mean, KC being in mm-hmm. the AFC as well. Yeah. Um, and the problem is for the Dolphins is that their remaining schedule features nothing but teams with a 500 or better record. Mm-hmm. And they're one of only three teams in the NFL in that situation. The only one of the teams involved in that playoff race in the AFC. They, after the Chiefs, they have the Patriots at home, and then they close out at Vegas and at Buffalo. So none of those are going to be like, easy matchups. And the other thing with the Dolphins is, as much as anything else, to me, the game against the Chiefs is just a great game to see exactly where they are. I mean, we obviously know that they've made insane strides from last year. Mm-hmm. And to be at eight and four is ridiculous to, to think where, where they were at the beginning of 2019. The thing is, they had, they played the the weakest schedule so far in the NFL yeah. in terms of the uh, opponents combined winning percentage. And the last four teams they played are a combined nine thirty eight and one. Hmm. So while they have looked good and won comfortably in those games, the last four, the, their last three wins are against the Chargers, uh, the Jets, and the Bengals. Yeah. Not quite the same type of competition as the Chiefs and the Patriots and the and the Raiders and the Bills. So the for the first thing you want to see is whether the Dolphins can consistently win against high-quality teams from the AFC. And mm-hmm. if they manage to beat the Chiefs, well, guess what? They can beat anybody. <laughs> yeah. and so at that point, not, not, only, not only would they have established that, but then they'd be 9-4. and four, And right. I would take almost pretty assured of a playoff spot. I don't want to say assured, but pretty, pretty well on their way to a playoff spot. So it's, it's a big game for, for them from that standpoint and from the standpoint of yeah. you know, establishing themselves as completely legit. So when you look into the game, there's several matchups, position to position matchups that I'm intrigued about. That first one being Patrick Mahomes versus this Dolphins secondary. Xavier Howard is picking off everything. He's, I think I saw a headline when I was looking up Xavier Howard stats that it said breaking news, Xavier Howard just picked off Christmas um, because he's been all over the field. He's been playing phenomenally. How do you think that this Chiefs uh, offense will react? Or I should, I should flip the question around. How do you think the Dolphins defense will react to Patrick Mahomes in this offense well the, they have the secondary to do it because that's the strength of their team and make no yeah. there's zero doubt that's the strength of the Dolphins team is the secondary I mean they invested a lot in it they went out and signed Byron Jones in the offseason made him mm-hmm. the highest paid cornerback at the time he's since been surpassed but at the time he was the highest paid they went out and drafted Noah Benogany with their third of three first round picks to add even more depth at the position and and their two safeties are former cornerbacks so obviously those, those okay. guys can cover. Now, obviously the Chiefs present a whole lot of problems because not only you have to deal with Tyreek Hill and Sammy Watkins and Nicole Hardman, oh, and you have the best tight end in the NFL and the Marcus Roberts, hey, it doesn't, it doesn't end. The one thing where the Dolphins are in a position to maybe be able to slow down the Chiefs better than some other teams is they have a, a safety who I think can do a decent job one-on-one against Kelsey, and that's Eric Rowe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. who ironically enough was signed as a free agent last year, came over from the Patriots, started off at cornerback and really wasn't good in the first several weeks of the regular season. Then the Dolphins decided, you know what, let's move him to safety and boom. Mm. Since that time, basically assigned to the opposing tight end, done a great job. I mean, he held George Kittle to four catches for 44 yards on eight targets. Wow. I mean, and I understand I understand Jimmy Garoppolo and C.J. Beathard are not Patrick Mahomes, but still, that's still some good work right there. So that gives you hope. Tyreek Hill's a different problem because as good as Egan Howard is as a cornerback, as a I don't know that he's got the speed to just line up across from, from Tyreek Hill and, and then, you know, shadow him the entire game. So I think this is one of those where they might rotate guys on him with safety yeah. help over the top as well. And we saw in the Tampa Bay game, you can't single cover him. Uh, you got to have some help over the top because Tyreek Hill uh, makes even the best cornerbacks look silly with his speed. 